Alright y'all, so I just got off work and I want to do a part 2 of the video that I literally just posted a couple hours ago. Get a little bit more in depth. I really didn't have time. I was on my break when I made that video and I felt like I was kind of rushing. But I'm glad y'all was able to receive what I, you know, what God was putting on my heart. If y'all haven't checked out the first part, I recommend y'all to go back, check out the first video. So y'all will be able to make sense of what I'm about to say in this video. Alright, so boom. So like I said in my last video, this is not only a time of abundance and fruitfulness and, you know, taking that next step taking that leap of faith and doing uh, what God has commanded. But this is also a time of reconciliation, a time of restoration, a time of repentance, a time of self-reflection from within. Because like I said before, we tend to like to put our blame on others and, oh, that person hurt me or that person did that to me or this didn't go out because this didn't go that way because they did this. Sometimes we tend to not look at ourselves in the mirror and recognize that, yes, all those may hurt, that sometimes we're the problem as well. What a lot of us don't realize is that our lack of accountability, our lack of um, putting our pride and our ego to the side is literally the, the one thing that is not only an idol, it's not only an idol, but it's also delaying and it's also creating stagnancy in for you to be able to walk into your full breakthrough. Hey, it might be idolatry from the other thing. Well, I, what I've say for me, and I'm be transparent. I'll be a little transparent here. What God's been speaking to me is is the idolatry of self, having that pride, and I'm talking about having that pride in reaching out, being vulnerable, being the bigger person in situations where, although, yeah, another individual or this circumstance may have been wrong. God wants us to look at it from a lens and a perspective of him. And although sometimes things don't go your way, although sometimes you are in the wrong with certain things, we all have to realize that there was also a role that we had to play in order for that thing to be played out the way that it did. A lot of us come with that victim mentality because growing up or in life, the, the finger was always pointed at us. We always felt like that we were to blame. We always felt like that people used us as the scapegoat and that we were misunderstood mistranslated and it led for us to feel neglected it led for us to feel abandoned it led for us to always keep our guard up and always you know keep our um keep up a wall like i said it is that fear of vulnerability that is stopping many people from reaching where god's trying to take them it is that fear of vulnerability that is creating a wall of pride a wall of ego and it's it's it's, it, God is trying to tear this thing down because it's a stronghold on many of you guys' lives. Now, I think that's what the swimming dream represented. God is using many things. He's using many people. He's using, using many opportunities and situations to get you to, you know, climb on top of the diving board and actually jump and take that leap of faith. Make that phone call. Send that text message. You know, apply for that loan. Apply, you know, for that LLC to get your business. Whatever it might be for you in your life, it don't even gotta be physical, tangible, materialistic things. They can also be spiritual matters as well. But what the Lord is saying is that you don't know whether you will drown or not until you make the jump, until you take the deep dive. And literally, when I looked up the definition of leap, it literally means to jump over, to spring over, spring forth. The one word that got me, that literally just confirmed why God gave me 333, which means to, you know, to, to basically see everything more clear, is that the other word for leap means clear. And this is where it's about to start correlating to what I wanted to really speak to you guys in the first video. God had me in 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4 was just a, you know, just a, a, a bunch of stories wrapped up in one chapter. It was a great amount of miracles, signs, and wonders. You know, a bunch of great stories of faith, restoration, deliverance, reconciliation, redemption. And it all involved the prophet Elisha. The one main story, or well, the two main stories that really got to me, which correlates to everything I'm speaking to you guys right now, is the one story where it was talk about the widow woman and the oil. Now, the widow woman, she lost her husband. She had two sons. But well, as the husband died, the husband died in death. And because of the husband died in death, the people needed, you know, they needed what they needed back. And that if they didn't receive what they were going to get back, they were going to take her sons and they were going to go into slavery as of, you know, like as a payment for the loan. Now, 
I'm pretty sure that the widow woman, in times of uncertainty, in, in times of unknown, I'm pretty sure she was pretty afraid. I'm pretty sure that she didn't know what to do. But the beautiful question that Elisha asked her, he said, what do you have? Meaning, what do you have in your house? And guess what? She had a whole bunch of oil in her house. A lot of people don't realize, but oil represents the spirit. In this physical matter, it represented something that she could use to try to um, raise up more profit to pay off the debt in which her husband owed. So she ended up having oil but no vessels. So Elisha instructed her to go to her neighbors and borrow some empty vessels to be able to pour the oil into. I'm pretty sure that this might have been very, very tough. It may have been very hard for her. It might have required some awkward conversations. It might have required her to ask some awkward questions. There's many of you guys right now that God's instructing you to do um, that is requiring you to step out in faith, that is requiring you to get a little bit more vulnerable than you have before. Of course, I understand, you know, you may have been rejected the first time. You may feel like that this thing is going to reject you. You may feel like that this thing is not going to work out for you. But that's why it takes in trusting the Lord and falling at his feet and trusting that whatever he is instructing you to do, that it's all going to work together for, you know, his purpose in your life. So, you know, the widow woman did what was told. And because of her obedience and because of the measure of her faith, eventually led her to not only be able to fill up all you know the um the empty vessels for her to be able to sell she also had enough to live off the rest and she was walking abundantly she was walking in fruitfulness i'm gonna ask you this question right now yes the oil is with you <laughs> yes god is with you but where is the areas in your life that god is assisting that you go out and pour into but because of out of fear you are acting timid and you are acting out in unbelief, my God. When it comes to restoration, when it comes to the divine miracles, we tend to, you know, believe that God has to do all the work. Not knowing that God has already set it up in place. He's already given you the assist. He's already orchestratedly put you in a position to win. But you still have to be God halfway. You still have to put in the work. You can't require to put in a little effort and expect something great to come out of it. You can't expect little to no communication and expect for a flourishing relationship you can't expect to be greedy with what all that guy has given you and not giving your first fruits to god and expecting god to abundantly bless you but according to the measure of your faith is what will be counted onto you and because of the measure of faith that was accounted onto the woman was greater than um than anything she not only was able to pay off the debt she was also be able to kept her sons she was also able to live off of the oil in which she was pouring into other empty vessels. I don't think y'all hear me right now. God has been really exercising the acts of giving, the acts of loving thy neighbor as thyself. I think we tend to understand the religious side of things. We tend to forget about the spiritual aspect of things. We tend to forget about the fruit we need to bear. We tend to forget that the heart that we need to, to possess in Christ. Yes, you can have a nice prayer life. You can, you know, have, you know, church lingo but if your heart is not a heart of the spirit all that what you do is religion all that what you do is just a ritual it's just in vain i teach people honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me in this season it's all according to the measure of your faith are you going to take the leap of faith are you going to make the jump or are you going to continue activity are you going to turn back around to your old ways are you going to turn back around to what's comfortable and what's familiar all because of a fear of the unknown and something that you have no idea is going to happen even with the next story with the shamalite woman Prophet Elijah had promised the Shomalite woman with a son. And when the son came, as soon as the son came, the son died. And this made the Shomalite woman very angry because, you know, she's looking at it like this, like, you got to ask for none of this. Sometimes God would give us things that we didn't ask for. Sometimes he would give us things that we do ask for. And allow it to be taken away just so that we can realize that all we need is him. Just so that we can realize and be restored in our heart and our minds the true meaning of what it means to fall at the feet of the Lord. And that's what the woman did. Although she fell at the feet of Elijah, this is a representation of falling at the feet of God in times of despair, in times of loss of hope. I'm talking about to the point where she got a donkey and traveled a very far away just to get to prophet Elijah, just so that her son can be healed. And it was because of the according to the measure of her faith that God restored what was once dead and brought it back to life. God wants to restore dead things in your life. God wants to restore a lost thing. But it's according to the measure of your faith. It's according to what's coming out of your lips. It's coming out of your heart. And what's coming into full display with your actions. Let God in. Let God's will be done. Stop trying to figure it out your own way. Fall at his feet and trust him. I know it sounds too cliche. But if you do trust in him, I promise you, it's going to work out in the end. You want to understand why God had to do it the way that you thought it made sense in the first place.